We are talking about Fast and Furious 1 and 2 today. Ugh. <laughs> Don't act like you're not excited. Oh, boy. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to go over some of the comments we've gotten on some of our YouTube videos from this last week. All right. And uh, have you been watching any of the trailers coming out this week? Are you aware of anything nope, that's coming actually, out? actually, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, so... Some of them, Beautifully Broken is a movie that's coming out. I might actually already be out. This might be from last week, but we just got this comment. Um, okay. But this is about a family in the States who is having hard times. It looks like because they're rich, right? Like the dad's kind of a workaholic and the daughter's rebelling. But then there's a family from a country in Africa who's struggling and he becomes a refugee and moves to America and becomes friends with the guy from the States. Right. And it's basically, um, it, I mean, it's a Christian movie and it looks very similar to something like God's not dead. Uh, oh, yeah. as in quality wise. Yeah. Like quality wise and Production. like how, uh, heavy handed it is and like oh, geez. manipulative. Of course. Um, but we got this. Why did, why did they have to be like that? I don't know. Uh, I don't understand why they're like that. I don't know why every all of them seem to be that way. It's 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 all of them. Yeah. Uh, do you, is it? Do you think they don't realize it, or they think that's how they have to do it to like reach their audience? Uh, I think that there's requirements about one. It needs to be um, uplifting, right? Like it needs to. Okay, it, it, I'm fine with that. It can't be dark. It can't be like graphic and all this stuff. Like all that stuff, they're like, we don't, we don't, we want to make movies that are like good, wholesome movies that the whole family can watch. Well, yeah, but yeah. for the the widest possible audience. <laughs> um, you say whitest or widest? No, no, as soon as I said that, I realized that's what it sounded like. Uh, widest, widest, largest. Okay. Yeah, fattest possible audience. <laughs> the fattest, the heaviest possible audience. Um, yeah. So yeah, they ha the, there's that, but then there's like this need to almost evangelize with it, where they're uh -huh. like, oh, we're if people are gonna watch this, here's our chance to trick them or not trick them, but like convince them that being Christian is good and that it's the right thing to do. But it yeah, it could, <sighs> it's propaganda at that point. Right, you you make art with the intention of convincing someone of a stance, and yeah. that is never enjoyable. No matter what the stance is, if you agree with it or not, you're either like I don't know. It's it's tough. The any any form of propaganda, if the the art is there to convince you of an idea, it's gonna be really hard to get through. Uh, but so we got this comment from Sabrina on the trailer breakdown of Beautifully Broken. It's a bit long, so give me a second. And sorry if I mumble my way through this. I'm not uh, not the best at reading, unfortunately. Or writing. Or writing. Spelling. Or living. Comprehensive thinking. Thinking. <clears throat> Got it. The name alone almost celebrates whatever tragedy occurs. Beautifully broken. When you are of a faith, pain is a test to you. When you aren't, it's to convince you to find faith. And if you're... If you convert after hardship and pain, it's okay. Sorry. And if you convert after hardship and pain, it's almost better than having that faith from the beginning because you chose you're beautifully broken. Some tragedies just shouldn't happen, such as what happened, which is, oh, sorry, such as that Here which has happened in Rwanda. I can tell the one man is trying to save his family. So that I assume is the white family. But the trailer seems to compare that to a matter of family turmoil for the American family. Oh, nope, I was wrong first. She's talking about the African family first. When the mother says, we're losing her, all I can think of is how the other man fears his family actually, fears for his family who actually lives. And I can't tell what their daughter is going through exactly, but it looks like normal team drama that should not be parallel to the other man's hardship. I feel something bad is going to happen to the Rwandan family. It's going to solidify that man's faith, and the American family is going to come closer together in response to his loss. 
This is only off of the trailer. No knowledge of what happened. I just don't like the sense of glorifying tragedy I'm getting from this film's trailer and title combined. So basically saying like the the African family is going through something that's really hard, right? Like this huge deal. Yeah. They're getting separated. There's, you know, war going on, all this different stuff. And the American family, while they're having hardship, it's it's not really the same thing, right? Like you can't, they're they're taking there is a common thing in these movies where this like poor family this broken family teaches the rich family that what the meaning of life is all about and they learn mm-hmm. from all that but it doesn't really it just kind of ab- abuses the poor family in some way like um not like take advantage of them but they so Living here in Thailand, we see no, I know what you mean. we see a lot of people come out and visit, and they'll go to like the slums or to the garbage dump where people live, and they're like, "Wow, my life is so good. Why do I complain so much? You know, it could be way worse." And that's the takeaway they get from it, and which is fine, right? Like, oh, I don't complain, but the the mentality should be more of, "Oh, I have it so good, I shouldn't complain," and it's like, "Oh, wow, I have it so good. How can I help these people?" You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it's, it becomes very um, uh, about yourself or selfish almost when you, you're confronted yeah. with someone's hardship. And so I think that's what Sabrina's saying. I gotcha. Were those uh, similar to your sentiments on the trailer? Yeah, I think it, I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going <laughs> to not be a good movie. I'm not, uh, I probably, well, I always say I'm not going to watch it, but I feel like I always end up seeing this crap. Um, <laughs> but yeah i'm not is there are there any like christian based movies that you do enjoy um so i haven't seen it for a long time but i think faith like potatoes was actually pretty good faith like potatoes yeah it's all about this farmer in south africa potatoes. who is growing potatoes but it was like not supposed to work out for him and uh it it felt it felt like it was like truly like it, it's based off a true story, but it actually felt like it was telling a true story, which was cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hmm. Facing the Giants is an okay movie. Like it's not great or anything, but that was, that was all right. I have not seen that one. Uh, it's about a, I, a football, a high school football team. Right. The, the production quality is really low. Um, of course. and it's, it's kind of heavy handed too, but it's not like, it's not like God's not dead. God's not dead is some of the worst garbage I've ever seen. Worse than saving Christmas. Saving Christmas is the top. That's the pinnacle. <laughs> That's so bad. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear. Um, but fireproof fireproof has uh Kirk Cameron in it and that's not bad, yeah. but that's, that's more focused on marriage than anything else. Like, Right. strengthening your marriage and stuff and that, that's not a terrible movie um let's see i got i haven't seen it but i heard all about it when it came out everyone that's, was all about it that's one of the other issues when it comes to christian media is the expectation of seeing it or that you're like oh this is this is christian so you're required to see it otherwise you're a bad christian and it's like well no that's weird mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense but uh there's another comment on the John McEnroe in the realm of perfection, which is a documentary about John McEnroe, um, his career in tennis and how he was almost mm-hmm. good, but kind of like lost it because of his temper. Uh, yeah. They were just correcting that I said Lindell's last name wrong. I probably said Lin, Lindell's, Lind, Lindell's, Lindell's, something like that. And it's L E N D L apostrophe S. They said it's Lind L. Yeah, sure. And that was LZV. So that's him. I, I, I hate when I do these, when I do these uh, trailer breakdowns and I, I read people's names. I feel so dumb. Mm. I really struggle <laughs> reading some of people's names. Yeah. Um, but this week coming out is operation finale. Have you seen the trailer for that yet? Uh, I have not. It is about um, Adolf Eichmann who was a lieutenant for Hitler and like right. killed so many people. Like was a, a huge part of how or why a lot of people died. 
It's about capturing him after the war, like hunting him down, capturing him, bringing him to justice. Mm -hmm. And it's got this is a true story. Yes, it's got Ben Kingsley okay. who's playing Adolf Eichmann, and then Oscar Isaac okay. is in it. But also, who I think he plays a Jewish lawyer, Nick Kroll is in this movie. Really? And I was kind of shocked. Like when you watch the trailer and you see him in it, I my first instinct was like, oh, that's weird. Nick Kroll is not someone I would think about putting in a uh, movie about the Holocaust. A serious movie? Yeah. yeah. But uh, he, I mean, he looks like he's doing a good job. He looks like he's acting. That as, his acting is that solid. That alone makes me want to see it. And uh, I mean, again, it's just based off the trailer, but it seems like he's doing good at what he's doing. And uh, yeah. Millennium Mouse over on YouTube says, Nick Kroll will sure to surprise us if he can play a bigoted caveman. He can sure play a serious role. That's okay. Now I don't. Now I don't remember the bigoted caveman. I don't know. Is that? Yeah, that's what I was trying to think. Was of. it year one? That was the thing I thought with uh, that Jack Black, Michael Sarah movie. Yeah, I remember the movie, but was he in that movie? That's I didn't know I who know. he was back then, so he might no. have been. But quick question: So you said Ben Kingsley is the villain? Yeah. Yeah, he's Adolf Eichmann. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but is he not also plays one of the main Jewish guys in Schindler's List? Yep. Yeah, he's okay. he's well. the uh, he plays <laughs> he's both sides. Well, he's this is his third Holocaust movie. Okay, uh, let me think here. I don't remember the second one, but it's Schindler's I List. Don't either. Oh, he was uh, in Anne Frank. He was the dad in one of the Anne Frank movies. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, he was in two as um, he was in Schindler's List, where he played like the foreman. He was Schindler's like right hand mm -hmm. man, who was Jewish. Who was the one Star in the in the movie? At least Star. he was kind of the driving force behind saving the Jewish people. Schindler was responsible for it. You know, he had the factory and he allowed it to go on. But Ben Kingsley's character is the one who was like, the one, like getting it done. And then, the uh, and then I, I'm pretty sure he was Anne Frank's dad in one of the Anne Frank movies. And uh, I haven't seen any of those. But yeah, now he uh, he's the bad guy. He's the one killing all the people. Interesting. But uh, okay. It looks it looks really good, Operation Finale. Okay. And I'm gonna have to watch it. I uh, I'm excited for it, but I'm like, not stressed, but anxious of like, ah, oh, this is gonna be heavy. You know, it's gonna be one of those yeah. like you oh, watch sure. and you're just like, it's good, it's well done, but I'm tired now. <laughs> I just it's exhausting. I need to go yeah. watch something nice to like, clean my palate, cleanse my palate. Um, but yeah, also coming out this week is Ken. We heard about Ken, K I N, Ken. like brothers. No. It's about uh -huh. um these two brothers. One of them is adopted. He finds this alien technology that is just like his big okay. alien gun, and he uses it to protect his brother from gang members who are trying to get at him. And the nice. the first time I saw the trailer, I didn't think it looked that great. But there's a, a short film called Bagman that the movie's based off of. Mm. And Bagman is really well done. And it makes me way more excited for Ken. Um, mm. But like Dennis Quaid is in it. James Franco is in it. Um, and then a few other people that I don't know. But uh, Zoe Kravitz is also in it. Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Um, yeah, okay. Millennium Mouse said, the latest film that I've ever seen Zoe Kravitz in was a lackadaisical chick flick called Rough Night. But anyhow, I'm still amped on checking out Ken. I've never heard of Rough Night. Have you? Yeah. Um, oh, I, I've heard of it. I, I mean, I didn't see it. It looks stupid. No. I want to say, is that the one that had... What's her? Oh, God, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, it's got Scarlett Johansson. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ken, Ken does look pretty good after watching Bagman. I would, 
if you've seen the trailer for Ken and you're like on the fence about it, I would definitely recommend watching Bagman because it was written and directed by the guys who wrote and direct Ken. So hopefully it's more of the same. It's going to be a lot bigger budget, which makes gives it more potential that it's not going to be as as good because there's a lot more people who are expecting stuff out right. of it. But I think it's definitely worth a shot. I've given it a shot to watch. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, uh, well, that's pretty much all the, the comments that we got this week on the trailers. There's, oh, you know, one other thing that I was kind of annoyed with. What's that? Uh, Blood, Blood Fest is coming out this week, which is a Rooster Teeth film. And generally when I make the trailer reviews, I put the trailers in the video. Yeah. And it'll get claimed by YouTube and it'll say, oh, the people who own this are going to monetize it if any ads play. So they're going to get any money that would be made on that video. Not that it, they're making any money right. at all, but that's basically what the deal is. They're like, yeah, go ahead, use the trailer. But if this makes any money, we're going to yeah. take it. And I'm, which for me is perfectly reasonable, right? Yeah, like, it's their- yeah, I'm using stuff you guys made. You know, I'm talking about what you made. I'm not not looking to like, you know, I take advantage of that. Yeah. But Rooster Teeth like shut it down completely. Oh, really? They blocked it in all the countries and all that stuff. So I was kind of annoyed. I was like, which is fair. It's their thing, right? They can block it if they want. But I I don't know. I've, I've always kind of had the impression that trailers are kind of fair game to use, to talk about, to, you know, break down and stuff yeah. like that. But it... Bloodfest looked really bad. So it's kind of the you're thing. Have to and so it makes me wonder. Go ahead. So, so I, I don't I'm not familiar with Rooster Teeth. Oh, okay. Rooster Teeth is a uh they're a media company in Austin, Texas. They started out around the same time YouTube was coming out. Okay. But they did their own they had like their own servers and all this stuff. They're the guys behind Red versus Blue. Oh, okay. Um Achievement Hunter ruby which is r w y b i think it is something like that um which is like an anime but it's an american anime um they did laser team which was actually pretty good but Bloodfest is coming out and it's this like horror comedy that is based on like a um there's like this big uh party out in the woods to celebrate horror but then it turns out to be an actual horror like our murderers are there to kill people yeah. and people are running away, but they go through like these buildings and each building has a certain type of horror genre that you have to survive. So like they're in a high school at one point and then maybe a hospital. I don't, I don't really know. They said there's 11 horror movies we have to survive. Oh, so that's kind of the premise is there's like zombies at some places and you know, slasher, right. okay, whatever. But it looks closer to scary movie type of comedy oh. than something like cabin in the woods yeah. and it's it looks really bad huh. but yeah so they they said i can't use any of that and they just blocked it all completely which is fine again not my stuff i didn't make right. it but i was kind of surprised like oh okay can't even show anything from it without getting in That's trouble interesting. but it doesn't matter yeah, so uh, that's the stuff coming out this week. We'll uh, we're about to record our episodes on Fast and the Furious, Ugh. and we'll be we'll be back. If you listen to this on the podcast, we'll be back uh, in a couple of days. If you are watching us on Twitch, we'll be back in, in yeah, a mere we'll second. Back now, I think right now. 